Day 176. Job 3 to 4. After this, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. And this is what he said, May the day of my birth perish, and the night it was said, A boy is conceived. If only that day had turned to darkness. May God above disregard it, may no light shine upon it. May darkness and gloom reclaim it, and a cloud settle over it, may the blackness of the day overwhelm it. If only darkness had taken that night away. May it not appear among the days of the year, may it never be entered in any of the months. Behold, may that night be barren, may no joyful voice come into it. May it be cursed by those who curse the day, those prepared to rouse Leviathan. May its morning stars grow dark, may it wait in vain for daylight, may it not see the breaking of dawn. For that night did not shut the doors of the womb to hide the sorrow from my eyes. Why did I not perish at birth, why did I not die as I came from the womb? Why were there knees to receive me, and breasts that I should be nursed? For now I would be lying down in peace, I would be asleep and at rest with kings and counselors of the earth, who built for themselves cities now in ruins, or with princes who had gold, who filled their houses with silver. Or why was I not hidden like a stillborn child, like an infant who never sees daylight? There the wicked cease from raging, and there the weary find rest. The captives enjoy their ease, they do not hear the voice of the oppressor. Both small and great are there, and the slave is freed from his master. Why is light given to the miserable, and life to the bitter of soul, who long for death that does not come, and search for it like hidden treasure, who rejoice and greatly exult when they can find the grave? Why is life given to a man whose way is hidden, whom God has hedged in? I sigh when food is put before me, and my groans pour out like water. For the thing I feared has overtaken me, and what I dreaded has befallen me. I am not at ease or quiet, I have no rest, for trouble has come. Then Eliphaz the Temanite replied, If one ventures a word with you, will you be wearied? Yet who can keep from speaking? Surely you have instructed many, and have strengthened their feeble hands. Your words have steadied those who stumbled, you have braced the knees that were buckling. But now trouble has come upon you, and you are weary. It strikes you, and you are dismayed. Is your reverence not your confidence, and the uprightness of your ways your hope? Consider now, I plead, who, being innocent, has ever perished? Or where have the upright been destroyed? As I have observed, those who plow iniquity and those who sow trouble reap the same. By the breath of God they perish, and by the blast of his anger they are consumed. The lion may roar, and the fierce lion may growl, yet the teeth of the young lions are broken. The old lion perishes for lack of prey, and the cubs of the lioness are scattered. Now a word came to me secretly, my ears caught a whisper of it. In disquieting visions in the night, when deep sleep falls on men, fear and trembling came over me and made all my bones shudder. Then a spirit glided past my face, and the hair on my body bristled. It stood still, but I could not discern its appearance, a form loomed before my eyes, and I heard a whispering voice, Can a mortal be more righteous than God, or a man more pure than his Maker? If God puts no trust in his servants, and he charges his angels with error, how much more those who dwell in houses of clay, whose foundations are in the dust, who can be crushed like a moth. They are smashed to pieces from dawn to dusk, unnoticed, they perish forever. Are not their tent cords pulled up, so that they die without wisdom? Acts 7 verses 44 to 60. Our fathers had the tabernacle of the testimony with them in the wilderness. It was constructed exactly as God had directed Moses, according to the pattern he had seen. And our fathers who received it brought it in with Joshua when they dispossessed the nations God drove out before them. It remained until the time of David, who found favor in the sight of God and asked to provide a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who built the house for him. However, the Most High does not dwell in houses made by human hands. As the prophet says, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord, or where will my place of repose be? Has not my hand made all these things? You stiff-necked people with uncircumcised hearts and ears. You always resist the Holy Spirit, just as your fathers did. Which of the prophets did your fathers fail to persecute? They even killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one. And now you are his betrayers and murderers, you who received the law ordained by angels, yet have not kept it. On hearing this, the members of the Sanhedrin were enraged, and they gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, 
looked intently into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they covered their ears, cried out in a loud voice, and rushed together at him. They dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile the witnesses laid their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen appealed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Falling on his knees, he cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep.